that thou art a man and not God. Though thou didst set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can be hid from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver unto thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches. Thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am a God? But thou shalt be a man, and no God, in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. What you are looking at today is what it looks like when men cross a line to believe they are God's. They, like Pharaoh of old, believe that they are God's. This is what it looks like when men actually believe that they have gone beyond the God of the Hebrew Bible. Have they gone beyond Him? Have they learned yet how to create organic matter from their words? And if so, have they learned to create themselves? The answer is a resounding no. No. If you take all the taxpayer money from them and the military might from them, all two-bit dictators fall on their face. Because on their own, I grew up with some sixth graders that could beat them personally to the ground. Can they defeat the elements? No. They still only seek shelter from them. Surely a God would not fear the elements, nor even need an umbrella. Have they gone beyond the God of the Hebrew Bible? I think not. For they create shortages by blockading food from the people, by hoarding supplies on ships and creating scarcity. Then at the last moment, they step in and declare themselves the Messiah, the Savior of the people. Is this not what Obama attempted to do? Have they gone beyond the Savior of the New Testament, Jesus Christ? Oh, far from it, for they cannot raise themselves from the dead. This is what the Antichrist will do through lying wonders like deep, fake technology and body doubles which are already in use. Did not their so-called prophet declare that they will go beyond the God of the Hebrew Bible through technology? Now you know how the Antichrist will seemingly raise the dead through what the Scripture calls lying wonders. Oh, but you, my brother and sister, will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. This is where we are. Men have crossed a line thinking they're God. They say we've gone beyond the God of the Hebrew Bible. Harari says he's gone beyond the God of the Hebrew Bible. And yet, if he's gone beyond and he's past all feeling and emotion, he's in the epitome of it because he is a homosexual. Why not just make out with one of your machines? You're not gods. You're not gods. You're degenerates. And you're people that have dropped mankind down into where you will say, why do we need so many people? You actually said that. He actually said those words. Why do we need so many people? And when asked, he said, one day we will not, you'll not know humans as we are humans. 
for they will be a kind of cyborg, a, cy a kind of machine and man. This is their goal. This was the, the prophecy revealed in Isaiah 14. When Lucifer said, I will exalt my throne, when he sung the song of a man, turned it on himself and said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will exalt my throne above the stars, speaking of angels, speaking of angelic forces. I will exalt my throne above the stars. The word throne there in Hebrew, it begins to speak of hide covered, uh, eyebrows, back, things like that. He knows he can't possess a man, for he's an angel. So he will create a machine with a man's soul that he can possess. And the Bible says that the beast will make an image of himself that both walks and talks. And now they're actually talking about it. And they say, we've gone beyond the God of the Bible. Your false prophet, Harari, he even says these things. He said, we will, why? He said, why, why do we care if we make the God of the Bible mad? He actually said these things. Why do we care if we make him mad? He said all he would do is cause droughts when Israel made him mad. So why we don't care if we make him mad. Let's make him as mad as we want, we want him to be. He wants to be. We still have water. Well, actually, that's a stupid, that's a stupid foolish answer. Because where are you getting your water from? Your words? Are you speaking it out? You have no water if streams and rivers and oceans go dry. You have no water if there is no dew. You have no water. Don't, uh, don't even start that bull. Because if you do, the Lord may prompt a prophet to say it will not rain until I say it rains. You need to keep your ignorant mouth shut. Turn around and talk to your own panel at the WEF, people that are as stupid as you are. Talk to them. Maybe they'll believe you. But don't mess with this. Because when they said that in ancient Israel, Elijah just simply said, it will not rain till I say it rains. And water became a precious commodity. And then I hope they storm your door down trying to get water. Don't start this bull. You wanted a war with God, you called it. Now the Lord will come and things will change. Already things in the ocean are shaping up differently. Already nations around the world are thinking differently. I don't know if you know this or not, but they are thinking, rethinking following you. They are starting to rethink following this new world order. They're already rethinking it. And there's already traitors on your heels. That was all by inspiration of God just then. That was inspiration of the Holy Ghost just now. They're already talking about, think about it. Ahab told Elijah, he said, look at me, I am. This was in the writing of the Jews. He said, look at me when he met Elijah. Why? Because they had forgotten what prophecy will do. They had forgotten the power of the God of the Hebrew Bible. They had forgotten the power. And so they violated a prophecy that Joshua wrote in Joshua 6. He said, whoever rebuilds Jericho will lay the foundation in the blood of their firstborn, the lives of their firstborn, and will hang the gates when they finish it in their youngest. And a man named Heel rebuilt Jericho, and he buried his firstborn when he laid the foundation, and he buried his youngest when he, they hanged the gates. And the Jews teach he buried seven sons within the building of that. And so Elijah was going down there to, 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 to meet him and tell him. And Ahab met him on the way and said, look at me. This is not true because Moses, your master, said that if you live the way I live, that there wouldn't be any rain. He said, look at me. I've, I'm blessed. I have plenty. And Elijah looked at him. And the warning, the prophecy of Moses 
became brand new in the mouth of Elijah. And he said, it will not rain or be any dew until I say so. And for three years, there was no rain and no dew. And there was precious little moisture for men to drink. And now we see a false prophet. And all you naysayers that you want to call somebody a false prophet, why don't you look at Noah Harari and call him the false prophet? Because that's what a false prophet looks like. And now he's saying we don't care if we make the God of the Bible as mad as we want to. We've got water. You better watch it. That's exactly what Ahab said. And the first time God prompts a prophet or a group of them maybe to say it will not rain till I say it rains, then it will not. And you you know, I was, I was meditating on some of this the other day and uh, about this new prophet, they call him. Christians seem to, uh, to be confused on what a false prophet looks like. See, a false prophet prophesies the Antichrist to come. That's what a false prophet is. It's not a prophet that says something and then something else happens or it don't happen at the time you think it should happen. That's not a false prophet. Because Isaiah walked into uh, Hezekiah, said, Get your house in order, for thus saith the Lord, you will surely die. Then Isaiah walked out of the garden. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, repented, and he said, Lord, remember my righteousness. And the Lord stopped Isaiah and said, Go back and tell him he's got 15 more years. Would you call Isaiah a false prophet? No, you would not. You wouldn't call Samuel one, but yet he looked at Saul and said, Today your kingdom's gone from you. But Saul stayed on the throne for years after that. But he was no longer recognized as the king by heaven. Put that in perspective with right now. But yet people stand up and they want to say this one's God uh, or this is a, a, a constitutes a prophet. This, this is a prophet of the Lord. This is the, this is, and they don't even know what they're speaking of because they're not prophets. And I was thinking about this false prophet that's on the scene. Obama listens to him. Klaus Schwab listens to him. He's his number one advisor. Zuckerberg listens to him. They all listen to this guy who wrote that book, Sapiens. <laughs> and I heard this in my spirit. He was a loser. He was a loser who had nothing going for him until he invited that demonic spirit to possess him. He had nothing going for him. He was as stupid as anybody else out there. Had nothing going for him because he's making stupid arguments that make no sense with the God of the Bible and yet sit there and admit there is a God of the Hebrew Bible. He admits that he's God. He just says he wants to go beyond it. We want to go beyond it. Who's the we you're speaking of, Hallsfly? Who's the we? Who is the we? Won't you reveal the we? Maybe it's we Obama. Maybe it's we Biden. Maybe it's we Swab. Maybe it's we. He was a loser who had nothing going for him. And his arguments are absolutely easily destroyed by his own mouth. He admits there's a God of the Hebrew Bible. But he will not admit Jesus rose from the dead. That constitutes classic devil, classic demon, classic unclean spirits, classic. What is the classic? Well, they're all unclean. But you know, even the unclean spirit bowed down in front of Jesus and be the man begged, get this thing out of me. But not this man. He likes it because without those spirits, he goes back to being a loser with nothing to say. A two-bit professor who has nothing on his mind. You say, well, how do you say all that, Brother Robin? Well, I don't say it on my own, and I don't hate the man. But let me, let me tell you something. Watch this. 
He says the God of the Hebrew Bible, all he managed to do was create organic life. And you have done what? To start with, he admitted there's a God and he admitted he created humans. Humans, the most complicated system in existence. Humans. He created the mouth you're blaspheming with. And he makes you think he's going beyond it by making Robbie the robot. He really does this. And he makes you think they're going beyond it. It's the classic argument. God and man having a contest. And the man says, God says, let's just have a contest and see who is God. The man said, yeah, we could do that. The man said, matter of fact, we want the contest. God said, okay, let's create a man. And you've got Harari on one side and, and you've got God on the other. And he says, yeah, let's create a man. And so he says, no problem in our laboratories. So they go start gathering up his dirt. And then they have to be interrupted. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, wait a minute. You have to get your own dirt. You can't use mine. Argument over. Well, we'll create dirt out. No, you can't. You've got to create it out of your words. You've got to speak it into your hands. But first, you've got to show you can create the hand that catches it. Now, do you understand? And he's trying. And they're trying to bring people into this one world regime. So that Satan himself, the seed of the serpent, can have eyebrows. A back, a hide. That is where they're at. So what you're looking at today is men who have crossed the line to believe that they are gods. Well, Pharaoh did the same thing. He had crossed a line till he believed he was God. They had convinced him he was God. They raised him up from a child telling him he's God. He's raw. God on earth. They, he believed this. So when the Lord came in and did battle with his gods and just upended everything, and he let the people go, well, if he was God, why didn't he just raise everybody back from the dead? They can't do the simplest things like turn the rocks into people. Oh, yeah, Jesus said, uh, and remember what John the Baptist said. He said, God is able to raise up from these stones children of Abraham. Well, they hadn't accomplished that yet. And even Lucifer, uh, Satan stood and, and tempted Jesus and said, if you're the son of God, let me see if you can do something I've only seen other, one other son of God do. Command the stones to be made bread. They haven't got that far yet. Maybe if they've gone beyond God, we should just uh, take all the agriculture to our side and give them rocks and tell them, now turn the stones to bread. Drink the water of your words. Don't you see how foolish this all gets? The Bible said that demons know there's one God and they tremble. But they cannot admit that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. And let me tell you something. Harari said, the raising of Jesus from the dead was fake news. Fake news. Now, does that constitute a false prophet? A demonic spirit? Yes. But he admits there's one God. Listen to this prophet. Jesus was always in the beginning with God. His name was Word then. Father, Word, Holy Ghost. Three and one. Three, yet they're one. One, yet they're three. And they're all in the beginning together. One God. And the Word became flesh, born of the Virgin Mary. Grew up the spotless, sinless Lamb of God. He became our sin on the cross, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 20 and 21. 
He who knew no sin was made to be sin with our sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, in Him. He became our sin. He who knew no sin. He became our sin. He never committed a sin, but he died, he died the death of a sinner. Then he went into hell, and he paid the ultimate price for you and I. He rose again after three days and nights, totally victorious. And he stepped up out of, that, uh, out of hell and came through that tomb and said, All power in heaven and earth has been given to me. Then he commissioned you and I to go. He said, Now you go cast out the devil. <laughs> you do these things. And he ascended back to the right hand of God the Father where he ever lives to make intercession for us. Now, what I just said, demonic spirits can't say. So watch who you call a false prophet. Amen. Amen. So Pharaoh thought he was a god. And so when Moses left Egypt with the children of Israel, Pharaoh charged down hard on him. He came charging hard on him. And when he came down to the Red Sea, the fiery pillar, Habakkuk tells the story. Let's listen to the story of our God coming to Moses at the Red Sea. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Praise God. I want you to listen to this. It says in Habakkuk 3, verse 3, God came from Teman, and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. Pause calmly and think about it. It was so excited. This was so exciting. He had to say, everybody, just calm down a minute. And think about what was just said. Because it ignites excitement that our God came. His glory covered the heavens. And the earth was full of his praise. I haven't seen the WEF's glory cover the heavens. I haven't seen the earth full of their praise. I've seen them stand up and say, kill 7 billion people and go back to 500 million. I've never seen anybody praising them. Or their seated audience that you hear clapping that are private people that was invited with tickets more than likely. Because anybody with sawdust for brains knows this is not true. But listen to our God coming to deliver Moses and the children of Israel because the man who thought he was a God had them pinned against the Red Sea. And so it came down to a showdown between them God's prophet and God. And so here it was, showdown time. This was it, the time for a showdown. What is about to happen? And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand. There was the hiding of his power. The horns is talking about his lightning-like shafts of splendor was shooting from the palms of his hands coming to it. Could you even imagine God gets up on the throne, Moses is at the Red Sea, and here comes the, the little puny God with his turned up sandals coming down through there, <laughs> and his plastic crown, spray painted gold, whatever he had on. He comes looking like more of a clown than a king, comes riding down to, to where we're going to kill Moses. We're going to kill Moses. Why didn't you kill him when you had him in Egypt? Here he comes down to the Red Sea. And when he gets there, Moses and the children of Israel cry to God. And it says in here, if you, if you listen to the way it's said, they begin to praise God. They begin to praise, and their praise went up into the heavens, and the heavens filled with glory. And God stood up from his throne, probably called Michael the archangel in the chariot of war. And he pulled up beside his throne, and he stepped into it. But yet the Bible says that God's throne becomes his chariot, pulled by 20,000 angels around the universe. Imagine that. I haven't seen Harari do that. I haven't seen his Robbie the Robot, Danger Will Robinson, Danger. I've never seen all of them do this. 
but the magnificent God who has creatures that fly around his throne. Ezekiel talks about them and, and says that they have uh, these wings, these uh, with hands of a man under the wings, four faces on each one of them, a hoof for a foot, and moving around his throne constantly. In Revelation, it talks about six wings on these, uh, these other creatures, and they're flying around his throne. I've never even seen you with a creature yet except you, the creature. And you're sitting there, and here they come around the throne, and it says two wings fold this way, two this way, two this way, and the six wings fold around their bodies. And we see in Ezekiel the wheel within a wheel. All of these things happening. Man's technology sounds very puny up beside this. And it comes time, and Michael the archangel with 20,000 angels comes and pulls God's chariot down to the Red Sea. And when he does, his horses touch the water. And fiery horses. Listen to how it happened. He says, before him, with, he had shafts of splendor coming from his hands. Can you imagine? And his war crown, El Gabor, the god of war, the crown upon his head. 20,000 angels, the host of heavens with swords drawn. And here he comes and these, these lightning shafts come shooting out of his hand. And, and the Bible said that the curtains of Midian started shaking. And everything started trembling around him as he was coming to deliver his people from a puny, self-proclaimed God. Before him went the pestilence and burning coals went forth at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations. The everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. That means the way he did it then, he will do it now. Hallelujah. You should have guarded your mouth or read your Bible before you called the God of heaven to the battlefield. Poor, pathetic human. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction. The curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea that thou didst ride upon thine horses? and thy chariots of salvation. Thy bow was made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribes, even thy word, Selah. Thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. The mountains saw thee, and they trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. It says that his hode was seen in the heavens. His image, his imposing image appeared in the heavens. And the mountains trembled. The earth saw it. And it said the deep uttered his voice. When he came and approached the Red Sea <clears throat> from the other side, the deep uttered its voice. It means the subterranean water supply that supplied the earth with water. The very, very beginning of the water. The, all the subterranean water supply uttered his voice and said, there is God. And the floods just stood up and began to applaud him as he came by. And the scripture says in the book of Job, when God breathes, the frost comes. And the, the scripture says when the water parted at the Red Sea, it turned into ice walls, walls of ice. So God was breathing. <sighs> He's never stopped exhaling. <sighs> when he breathed into Adam. And it was the same breath of deliverance. The same breath of freedom. And this is what these puny people who think they're God have found themselves fighting against. The breath of the Almighty. He's never quit exhaling. That's why his name is Yah. You see names like Elijah, Isaiah, because they're prophets with the breath of God in them. He said that the deep uttered its voice and lifted up his hands on high. The sun and the moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows they went and the at the shining of thy glittering spear. 
For thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. Heathen, heathen. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for, sal even for the salvation with thine anointed. Thou woundedest the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundations unto the neck. Selah. That means he's going to take the head off of this giant. Hallelujah. Amen or oh me, as the old ministers used to say. Thou didst strike through with the staves the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was to devour the poor secretly. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses through the heap of great waters. Did you see that? Did you hear the motive? Did you hear the motive in verse 14? Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was to devour the poor in secret. This is their whole motive, to devour the poor in secret. He said, yes, thou, yet thou didst walk through the sea with your horses, through the heap of great waters. When I heard my belly tremble, my lip quivered at the voice, rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself, that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up, up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. This thing is about to come to a close, to an end. Well, we're at the Red Sea, then we're at a good place. We're at a good place to see his imposing image in the heavens, to see as the earth begins to tremble. Think about that next earthquake that happens. Think about what's probably happening. He's coming through the land. Hallelujah. And he's getting ready to deliver his people. The time of the lion has begun. And already you can hear the wind picking up as he moves this way. Amen. So what you're looking at today is, like I said, you're looking at what it looks like when men cross a line to believe that they are gods. They, like Pharaoh of old, believe that they are gods. Now do you understand what made Pharaoh go down into the Red Sea after them? He didn't believe the sea parted for God's people. He thought it parted for him. He, after all, was a god. So he thought it parted for him. And when you go back and read the story, you will find that the Lord said something. He said, I will get me honor upon Pharaoh. Honor? What honor? I will get me honor upon Pharaoh. What honor? We're going to see who the earth honors, him or me. And so the, the flood stood and clapped as God came through. And they watched him all the way out the other side. And then he turned around and here come the self-proclaimed God with all the technology. The mightiest army on the earth. And when the floods looked around and saw him, they said, who are you? And they closed. And so, this is what we have to look forward to, complete deliverance, while the enemy has to look forward to. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I guess that's all today on the 11th hour. It was a good 11th hour. It was a strong 11th hour today. Hallelujah. Now, I want, to, um, I want to tell you something before we receive the offering today. Take hope. Take courage in God. Take courage in His Word. His Word has never failed. The Scripture said that we understand through faith that He created the worlds with His Word. His Word. You can stand upon His Word. His Word will never fail you. Hallelujah. 
when so-called gurus of the earth and false prophets of the earth and money moguls who think they run everything in the earth are nothing but worm fodder. They're nothing but dust. This word will still be here. And he'll still be, he'll still be in the heavens. He will still be eternal, everlasting from, to everlasting. He is God. Well, where did God come from, Brother Robin? You don't even know what it was like to be born. You don't even remember being born. Tell me what it felt like when you came through your mother's womb in the birth canal. Talk to me about this. Tell me your earliest remembers and your earliest thoughts. And only when you can tell me how it felt to come through that birth canal can you even, even remotely question the origin of a, of a being who has no origin. You can't understand that he is the origin. He has no beginning and he has no ending, which proves you are not him. Hallelujah. Uh, you can't say hallelujah because you're demon possessed. But I'll tell you this, check this out. People say, well, evolution, 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 evolution. Evolution, yeah. Oh, this came from this. This came from this. This came. Okay, let's just take a, <coughs> let's take a, a, a grammar school approach to that right now, since we're talking about who that he's God and you ain't. So let's just go ahead and take this grammar school approach. You ready? Where did you come from? Well, we came from a, a, a blob. Where did the blob come from? Well, it came out of the ocean. Where did the ocean come from? Well, it came from a particle. Where did the particle come from? Well, we're working on it. Well, ask me where we came from. God said, let us create man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. I've got a beginning. You have nothing but a box of Cracker Jacks. That's all you got. Enjoy your caramelized popcorn. Cause that's all. And sit back and watch the show because it's about to really get interesting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's lift our hands and give God praise. Come on, we'll just give him praise and, and honor and glory. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God. I give you praise and honor and glory and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I want to give you opportunity to give today, but before I do that, uh, Chris is not here to receive the offering today, but before I do that, I want to invite you to know the greatest person you could ever know. And that is Jesus Christ. He is king. He is God in the flesh. He is the one who died for you and I. He's the one who went into hell and paid the awesome price for every sinner, everyone. He is the king of glory. I want to invite you to know him as your own personal Lord and Savior. How do I do that? Paul said, you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And you confess with your mouth that he's your Lord and you'll be saved. So why don't we do that together? Say it out loud. Uh, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me of all my sin. Cleanse my heart. Come and live in me. Take my life and do something with it. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, guess what? You just became a child of the living God with all the benefits of a child of the living God. Hallelujah. You just entered into covenant with the Almighty through the blood of Jesus, His Son. And now here we are today. You've got a brand new start today. You don't have to be afraid of, of everything, all these governments shaping up in the world, what they're doing, what they think they're going to do. And all they're going to do is end up, those that are coming against God, they're going to end up, I'll say it plain as and proper as I can, defecating and falling back in it. That's all they're about to do. Why do you say such crude things, Brother Robin? Because I'm a country boy. 
And if I say it in a very simple way, you can understand it. And it puts things in real perspective, does it not? Because they are people who fought over toilet paper. <laughs> yes. They're the people who tried to get everybody else to fight over toilet paper. Well, if they're gods, why didn't they just fix it where we didn't need it? It's because they're not gods, and they will die like men. Now, and I don't wish them in hell either. I don't wish nobody in hell. I wish they would turn their hearts to the living God. What a testimony they would have. Hallelujah. Now, and you know, I invite them all to do it if they want to do it. Jesus will save anybody who will ask. Now, don't stop there after you get born again. Go ahead and, and be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance and be filled with power and anointing for service. Just say, Lord Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Ghost. See, when you got saved, the Holy Ghost baptized you in Jesus. But when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost uh, Jesus baptizes you in the Holy Ghost and fire. So now, why don't you just simply say, Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit tells me what to say and say, thank you, thank you, Master, for doing that. And then just begin to praise Him. Lord, well, I praise You. Thank You for baptizing me in the Spirit. I give You honor and glory. Thank You, Jesus. And then shift over into those sounds you hear. And begin to stir yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And then after you've done that, then you can begin to pray that you interpret and the Lord will use messages, give you messages in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Well, I want to give you opportunity to give today. It's been a good 11th hour, so now we have built an altar this whole time together. So why don't we bring our gifts to the altar, and if you want to give, that will be fine, and we will receive your gifts into good ground. Hallelujah. And uh, I want to put up the scripture we pray a lot, Luke 6 and 38. Put that up on the screen for me so that everybody can see it. Now, I want you to look at this scripture. It says, give one time. Then it says, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. He said, give one time. He talks about receiving seven times. Now, that's the way God is. You know, where I grew up, my family were farmers, and uh, a lot of them were farmers, and, and my grandpas and all were farmers. And, and let me tell you how planting a seed works. You plant one kernel of corn. It grows a stalk six, seven feet high. It produces five ears of corn to every stalk, five to seven. And on each, on each ear of corn is 750 kernels because you planted one. Now, isn't that something? That's the way God, has, well, well, you know, what if we run out? You can't run out because in the DNA of one kernel of corn, it has already been commanded to produce seven ears, 750 kernels to the ear. It's built in. God created it to work. That's why there is no shortages. Now, the day will come when the church leaves the earth. There will be shortages and there will be all that. But this is not that day. They're having to put things on containers and barges and ships and hold them up, keeping them away from the people, convince us, try to convince us there's shortages when there is no shortages. So you want to remember that. The birds don't look worried. Neither does the animals everywhere. They just eat and they fly and sing all day. And God can get it to you too. And there's no way you seem like you're going to make it financially. Take a seed and sow it. Give it. If it's not here, give it to where the Lord leads you to plant it. Get involved in his system of multiplication, his system of of multiplying you, his system of abundance. Hallelujah. 
And then there's the tither. Oh, my goodness, the tither has promises that nobody else has. The tither has a promise and the only promise that God will rebuke the devourer for you if you tithe. Well, I don't have to tithe, Brother Robin. You don't have to do anything but live and die. But tithing puts you on the, the abundance side. Tithing puts you on this special private list that gets the devourer rebuked for them. This is what tithing does. What is tithing? It's a tenth of whatever your increase is. If it's a dollar, you have a dime. If it's ten dollars, you have a dollar. If it's a hundred, you have a ten. You have a thousand, you have a hundred. It's just it's a tenth. That way everybody can do it. Well, I only have a penny. Well, it won't buy anything, so give it. Hallelujah. And here's the promise of the tithe. Are you ready? Put that up on the screen, please. Malachi chapter three. Place that on the screen. It says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me, or test me now, herewith saith the Lord, Yahweh, of the organized armies of heaven, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. He said, test me in this financial thing, and see if I won't open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord Yahweh of the organized armies of heaven. So he's got an army that's going to back this promise up. Hallelujah. And saying the name Yahweh means it is in the system of planting and reaping. Amen. Praise God. Well, there's ways to give. If you're giving to this ministry today, there are ways to give and they'll be on the screen. I, I don't even, uh, I, I have to read it with you because, uh, let's see, you can text to give, and there's the number. You can mail uh, gifts, and there's the address. And it tells you how, who to make the check out to. And the YouTube link is in the description. So uh, that way I sounded very, very like I knew all about that, didn't I? Hallelujah. So you can go ahead and give. I want to tell you something, partners. We love you. I love you. I love you. I pray. I was praying for you yesterday. I'll be praying for you today. Tonight, I will have your names. I'll, I'll have you in my hand. And I've got to get my list updated, John. There's more partners, so I need that updated. And I carry your names with me so that I can pray over you. You're never a day without prayer. And if I think I've missed a day, that don't sit well with me. It don't sit well with me. I wake myself up if, I, if I'm on a meeting. I shake myself. I have to, I, I, I pray over you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Roxanne, you got some praise reports? Come on up here and let's give them today. Praise God. <laughs> 